solutions to the electric circuits unit review game that we played in class. Uh, just going to jump right into it. First one we had was Westfield. I gave you the table with how to kind of decode the four band resistors. First one we're given is blue, orange, brown, silver. So blue I see six and then orange and then brown is the multiplier to tell me to multiply that number by 10 and then silver is my 10% tolerance. So the answer is going to be 630 ohms and it has a tolerance of plus or minus 10% thanks to that silver band. The next thing is we want to figure out how many different combinations there are. There are four of them. You can do all three in series. You can do three in parallel. You can do two in series with one in parallel or you can do two in parallel and one in series. If you do those different combinations, you do all three in series, you just add them up, you get 1890 ohms. The three in parallel, you get your smallest amount, which is 210. And then uh, with your two different ones, you can get either with the two series and one parallel or the two parallel one series, you're going to get 420 and 940, I'm sorry, 945. Ohms, and that's what Westfield is. Moving on, Carmel, we were talking about power. These three, we have a 40 watt light bulb from Europe, which is rated at 240 volts. I want to know if it will be dimmer or brighter. This is going to be dimmer. Notice that your power equation is V squared over R. When we go from Europe to United States, our voltage becomes half as much, well, half squared, that means that our light bulb is going to be one-fourth as bright. Finally, we just need to figure out our resistance. We have these hair dryers with two different settings with their two power ratings, and they're both rated at 120 volts. The two resistances that we're going to get are either 24 ohms or 10 ohms. Number seven, the circuit that we're looking at, we need to realize that these two resistors are in parallel and then that is in series with the last one. So R1 and R2, we're going to figure out the equivalent resistance in parallel and then add that to 470. Our overall equivalent resistance that we get is 831.64 ohms. Now the key to this is figuring out the total current. Well, that's going to be the stuff for R3. The total current that we get based on this equivalent resistance, we were given that our voltage, our total voltage was 12 volts. Now we just found out our equivalent resistance was 831.64. So our total current is 0.0144 amps. The voltage that we get based on the resistance is 600 or sorry, 6.768 volts. And then if we want to just go ahead and do the power, this is kind of like throwing in a VERP table. I, it was kind of did a roundabout way, but a VERP table is really the best way to organize your thoughts. So this power is going to be 0 0.097 watts. Now the next thing we need to realize, because the other two resistors are in parallel, the voltage that they're going to have is just going to be 12 minus that value. So these are going to be 5.23 volts and volts. Now since we have the voltage for each and we have the resistance for each, we can figure out the current. And from that we have voltage, we have current, we have voltage, we have current, we can figure out the powers for each one. And now we're done. Next, we have Brownsburg. We were given a set of resistors. 2.9, 2.1, and 1.8 kilo ohm resistors. We want to draw the circuits. It's going to look like so. There's the one in series. And then we have them in parallel. This is 1.8, this is 2.9, and 2.1. And they're all in kilo ohms. Now, the next part of this problem, it's a little difficult, but what we need to do is realize that if each resistor is rated at half a watt, what is the maximum voltage that can be applied across the entire network? Well, we know that power equals V squared over R. So if we want to figure out the maximum voltage that each one of these can handle, 
we can go ahead and plug that in. This one, the maximum voltage it can handle is 30. The next one is the 2.9, the maximum voltage is 38.1, and this one is 32.4. Well, it looks like that resistor has the kind of minimum amount of voltage that we can possibly have. If we try to have 38 volts go across this, we're going to have too much current, thus this voltage would be exceeded. So really I need to determine that what is the current that is going through that resistor that is going to give us 30 volts. Well since we have resistance, we have voltage, I is just going to be V over R, so the current is going to be 0 0.0167 amps. So we know the total current because the current that goes through this resistor is actually our total current. Now one thing we can do is figure out our equivalent resistance. Well, we have these two resistors in parallel. We can figure out the equivalent resistance for those two in parallel. And then that is in series with the last one. My equivalent resistance is going to be 3.02 kilo ohms. Now I have total current. I have total resistance. All we need to do is find total voltage. And our answer is going to be 50.4 volts. Now we get to have a little bit of fun. We get to take a look at the light bulb problems. Let's see, if we get rid of light bulb A, that means the rest of the circuit goes. So that means we're going to get all of them. If light bulb B goes out, well it looks like B and D are in series with one another. So if B goes, that means D is going to go as well. And you can put, well yes, B must go out because we unscrewed it. Light bulb C, well it looks like this is a parallel branch. If we were to have a complete loop right here, it looks like all the other light bulbs would stay on. So none would go off of that one. Light bulb D, well we just said if B goes out, D goes out. Well, since they're in series together, it's vice versa. So D, we'll put B. And then finally E, E right there, kind of got cut off a little bit. It's just like A, if we get rid of E, our current is trying to have a path back to the battery. Uh oh, it gets stuck right there. Trying to have a path back to the battery, it gets stuck. So all of those light bulbs turn off. The next one, we have a slightly different circuit. If A goes off, this branch gets killed off. So that means that guy gets no current and that guy gets no current. So that means B and C get turned off. If B gets turned off, well, even if we have this branch, C can stay on. So everything's good. So that's none. Same thing with C. Light bulb D, well it looks like D and E are in series with one another, so if D goes, E will go, and if E goes, D will go, so this is just going to be E and D, where the other ones go as well. Okay, next one. This one was a little bit tricky, but looking at it, these two resistors were in series which was then in parallel with this combination, which was then in series with this combination, which was actually in parallel with this resistor, so we could then find the equivalent resistance of all this stuff, and then that equivalent resistance was then in series with this last 3 ohm resistor. The overall answer for that is 4.875 ohms. Moving on, we want to rank the order of light bulbs from brightest to dimmest. Well, we know that A is going to get the total current, and then they're going to split up. Well, because this one has a higher resistance, its current is going to go down. This one has a lower resistance overall, so its current is going to go up. So this one's going to have more current than this branch, but A is going to have the most amount of current. And we know that power is just I squared over R. So because of that, current plays a major factor. So since A gets all of it, it's going to be the brightest. So you go from A to B and then C and D are equal because since they're getting the same amount of current and they're identical light bulbs, they have the same amount of resistance. Now one thing that we're going to realize is that if light bulb C burns out, this branch goes away. By getting rid of this parallel branch, we're actually increasing the overall equivalent resistance because now instead of our current having a choice at this particular spot, there is no choice. So the resistance actually goes up, which means that our total current goes down. 
Well, if our total current goes down, while A was receiving this total current, there's going to be less of it, so it's going to be dimmer for that reason. Your equivalent resistance goes up because it's now just a simple series circuit. Your total current goes down, which means your power goes down. B, on the other hand, even though the overall total current goes down, now B is receiving all of that current which is more than when it would have had to share it with this parallel branch over here. So B is going to be brighter just because the current that it receives goes up, so the power goes up. Making our way towards the ends, we have another circuit. Every single one of these resistors is 100 ohms. Now, before the switch is closed, that means that this branch doesn't exist. If we were to find the equivalent resistance before, I'm going to say before, well, we have these two resistors in parallel. They're both 100. Well, nice little trick. If you have two equivalent resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is just half. So we're going to have 150 ohms beforehand. If we use that total equivalent resistance to find our total current, that's going to be the current going between our 1 that is going to be, let's see, 0.8 amps. There's going to be no current going through R2 because since this switch is open, there's no pathway for that current to go. And then because we have equal amounts of resistance here and we know that we're going to have equal amounts of voltage because they're in parallel, we can just take this current and split it up equally amongst those two resistors over there. However, when we go ahead and close this switch, we've now added a third resistor in parallel. So now what's going to happen is the resistance is going to go down. We're going to get an equivalent resistance of, I believe it's going to be 100. We get a total equivalent resistance of 133.33. So our equivalent resistance went down, which means our total current should go up which in fact it does, it increases by a tenth of an amp, but this time we have 0.9 going to this particular junction. At that point, it's going to be divided evenly amongst our three resistors because that's 100, that's 100, that's 100. So since there's no path of less resistance, they're all just going to get equal, so each one is going to get an equal amount of current that is divided up. Now, it seems like 29 and 30 were trick questions, but all I'm looking for, which re resistor dissipates the most heat, I'm really just looking for power. Well, they all have the exact same resistance, so power equals I squared times R. We're really just looking for what resistor has the most current. Well, before the switch was closed, resistor 1 has the most current. After the switch is closed, it looks like resistor 1 has even more current going through it. So both times it's resistor one. Taking a look at Beech Grove, these three resistors are in parallel, which is then in series with that final one. So we need to create a vert table. Now, if you need me to go through any of these, I can, but I know that I can fill in the resistances. Resistor one was six, we had 24, 24, 24. Those three were in parallel. Then added in series, our overall equivalent resistance is 14. That is huge. If you don't get that right, then your vert table is going to be all wrong. The voltage that we were supplied was 12 volts. We can go ahead and figure out our current, which ends up being 0.857 amps, and the power is 10.28 watts. Remember, fill in this bottom row first, and then you can go ahead and work backwards up your table. Now, one thing we know is that the total current we just solved for, that's going to be the total current that goes through resistor 1 because at that point, even though our current might have split up between these three branches, by the time it gets back here, it's still all the same. So I can go ahead and fill that in. I can then go ahead and fill in my voltage, which is about 5.142 volts. That's amps. And then we can fill in our power, which is 4.41 watts. Now, one thing that we know is that because each one of these resistors, 1, 2, and 3, or I should say 2, 3, and 4, 
they're equal, so they're going to get equal amounts of current. So all we have to do is take this total amount of current that we have and divide it by 3, and it's going to be distributed equally amongst our final three resistors. Same thing with voltage. Those three resistors are in parallel, so their voltages are going to be the same. Well, how do we figure out their voltage? We can either do resistance times current, or we could have taken our total voltage and subtracted the voltage dropped across that one resistor in series to get a value of 6.858 volts, 6.858, and 6.858. Go ahead and do the power. Well, all the voltages and all the currents are the same for 2, 3, and 4, so our power is 1.96. 96, 1.96, and what we should realize is that if we add up those three, or those four, I should say, it equals our total power, and we're happy. 32, let's see, we have a certain brand of hot dog cooker. All we needed to realize is that we had a certain amount of energy. We had a certain amount of, and we were trying to figure out how long it takes to cook these three hot dogs based on our voltage and current, well, answer 137.5 seconds. The second one, we had a light bulb. We wanted to figure out how long it costs to keep it on for a month continuously. All we'd have to do is take, it was 0.1 kilowatts multiplied by our, uh, what do we need to multiply it by? Multiplied by how many hours there were in a month, well, all I did to get this number was do 31 multiplied by 24 hours in a day. And then finally, I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.06 per kilowatt hour. What we should notice is that I have kilowatts on top, kilowatts on the bottom, they cancel. I have hours on the top, hours on the bottom, they cancel. All I'm left with is straight money. So all I have to do is 0.1 times 744 times 0.06, and that gets me a value of $4.46. So for an entire month of usage for a light bulb, especially a very high rated light bulb that uses more power, 100 watts, we're using light bulbs that are only like seven watts. So really to have a light bulb on for the entire month continuously, at least nowadays, it's gonna be significantly less than that. It's like less than a dollar. So not too big a deal. If your parents say, hey, stop leaving the lights on, you can say, well, here's a dollar and I'm good for the month. 34, we just needed to draw our circuit. We had three resistors, 20, 30, and 40. First one, I wanted to get an equivalent resistance that was 22.22. Second one, I wanted to get one that was 43.33. In order to do so, the first one, we had two resistors in series with the final resistor in parallel. We had 20 and 30 that were in parallel with 40. That would give us an equivalent resistance of 22.22 ohms. 35, we had one in series and the other two were in parallel. Let's see, this one was 30, this was 20, this was 40. That would give us the equivalent resistance of 43.33. Finally, last one, Noblesville. This was the easiest one. Fill in the blank. In a parallel circuit, blank is the same across each parallel resistor. That's the voltage. In a series circuit, this is the same across each resistor. That is current. And finally, the blank of each component resistor adds up to the total blank supplied by the battery. Well, going back to our verb table, we had the power of each individual one that it added up to our total being supplied by the voltage source. And notice that this was in series, these were in parallel. It didn't matter if we had series parallel, each component power should add up to the total power. So that answer was just power. And that concludes our Unit 2 Electric Circuits Review Game.